I do. Probably for a future council. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I want to thank all you folks for coming. Um, and I think uh, the consensus here that we, we need to look at some kind of a zoning amendment. Uh, so I guess if you work with staff and uh, see if we can come up with some kind of amendment that, that we can, that's suitable for everybody. Uh, and uh, see how that works out. Okay. Anything else, Carl? So I think just to uh, emphasize, certainly with respect to uh, to an amendment, obviously there is a, there is some unpredictability in the process. We don't know what this amendment's necessarily going to look like, if it's going to be supported by staff or, or by council. But that's that's the process that uh, that will uh, that we follow with with every application. So at, at this point, I'm I'm looking forward. Is is there a particular, for instance, a timeline that council would like to uh, to direct uh, to direct the proponent to uh, Confirm her, uh, confirm her intentions with staff. You go ahead, Joe. I was going to ask the what would normal, what would, what would the normal process be, or how long? If 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 they if they apply for a, re a zoning amendment, yeah. What's no the time frame to get either looked at or not looked at or get well, it decided? When an application is submitted, normally there's a, a period of both, usually three to four months, and and a lot of that is statutory. Is statutory time frames there's appeal periods there's notice ranges there's there's of course the council uh, the council meeting schedule so uh, so council can consider is this would uh, would we be okay with the uh, with the use continuing to operate in the interim while she applies for the amendment and goes through the process or or how long do we want to give give the proponent to uh, to apply for the amendment as well go ahead Chris. yeah no, so I've, got, I've got some thoughts it's okay uh, I've got some thoughts on that. I guess um, you know we have. I, I would think that it would be vital to the proponent. I'm sorry. I'm not sure who Jill Woods is. So, I, <laughs> sorry, I missed your other thing. So I, uh, I look at you. Um, so I think uh, Jill, if you uh, were intending to um, request that council consider a, a, a zoning amendment, that you should probably make that decision fairly soon. Um, and I would say, to answer you, Carl, I would say maybe 60 days should be reasonable before she makes a decision, and then, of course, it would have to follow the normal process. But it is, a, again, we know that it's against the bylaws, and we've got, we've got to deal with that. But at least then, if we know within the next 60 days that you're going to, yes, or I'm going to pursue that, then once she's pursuing it, I don't think we need to uh, bring down the hammer, if that's the right way to say it. Um, but she should make the decision sooner. If not, then we have to move forward with uh, trying to figure out another um, how to enforce the bylaw. So that's my opinion. Any other comments? No. Yeah, the, I agree with the 60 days. I agree too. So 60 days. Okay. And then okay. the process. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Carl. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll have to ask first. I'm with this one. Pardon? You know I'm with this. <laughs> oh. No, I, I guess we just, did you want to speak for the group? Yep. Okay, does so anybody have a problem with that? But make it short. No, it will be short. Okay. Don't worry. All right. I just wanted to mention this photo that we have going around here. This is one of the birds that are in here today. I don't know if you guys can pick out which one it is, but it's this one right here. Tina, she came out of a home here in Smith's Falls that was a drug infested home. And this is what she looked like coming out. And if it wasn't for this lady, that bird wouldn't be alive today. This is the work that she does. Thanks. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, we'll move on. <sighs> okay. We're going to be com uh, community improvement program funding, Axe and Arrow, Giro, Giro Pub, and that's, oop, and that's with uh, our planner again.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. My uh, second report this evening is on a, a new CIP a Community Improvement Plan application for, uh, for a fairly prominent location a couple of blocks down from here. So that is uh, 2 Russell Street East, the former uh, known previously as the, uh, the home of the coffee culture. So that uh, property has recently been sold and the, uh, the restaurant space on the, the bottom is, is, is going to be uh, leased and, uh, and developed by uh, Brian Paquette. He owns several businesses in town, including uh, Cafe Wim. His proposal is to operate a, uh, a bar and restaurant at the, uh, at the site. So there will be uh, breakfast, lunch, and, uh, and dinner menus there. So the, uh, the restaurant will be promoted as an upmarket pub and eatery and uh, to, uh, to accommodate some interior and exterior renovations to the property, he's applied for, uh, he's applied for funding under the Community Improvement Plan. So uh, last, uh, last week the committee, uh, the CIP Evaluation Committee met to consider his application and they, uh, they supported uh, funding under programs uh, 1, 2 and 3. So, so just to clarify, with respect to uh, to program one, the uh, the facade improvements have been uh, appended to this report, and he's looking for uh, funding for the wall flags, hanging signs, uh, the sign and the uh, the signs themselves, and uh, the wall sign and the installation, as well as as painting. So some of the paint on the uh, the upper trim around the building is in is in rough shape. He's looking to uh, to change that. That'll probably be in uh, in the spring when he has a more reliable temperature in which to operate and he's looking to undertake the uh, the facade improvements a little earlier. I'll just make a little note that the flags that are shown on the uh, on the render that have been attached are are hanging pretty low. They're actually proposed to be a little bit higher, a little bit or a fair bit higher than what's proposed there. Uh, I think the Mr. Paquette recognizes that uh, low hanging flags can can of course be a bit of a target for for people running and jumping along the side. But that's what it's uh, that's what it's going to look like. The committee was certainly very pleased to uh, to recommend approval of programs one, two, and three or program one there. Program two was a, uh, are the interior renovations and, uh, and the proponents submitted a, a variety of, uh, of costs there. The committee uh, supported some but not all of those costs and, and the ones that the committee was, was supporting funding related more towards the, the sort of permanent installations that would, uh, would truly add, uh, add value to the property. So the committee is recommending uh, a total grant of 13,405.56 dollars under Program 2, representing half of the, uh, the costs that, they, uh, that, they're, that they're requesting, uh, that the committee deemed uh, desirable to fund under the, uh, the CIP. And then Program 3 is the, uh, he, he applied for a, a rebate on the, the building permit uh, costs, which would likely be quite small. We, uh, he's looking at the signage and, the, uh, and just some minor plumbing, so there, we don't know the exact uh, value of that, but it'll probably be in the range of, of a couple hundred dollars in terms of the, uh, the building permit rebate under Program 3. So uh, the, the CIP committee and, uh, and town staff support the application. We recognize that this is uh, a good reuse of the property and certainly has the, can, can introduce quite a, quite a destination in our uh, downtown core and we're certainly happy to see, uh, to see a, an adaptive reuse in downtown as well. I welcome any uh, discussion by, uh, by council on this. I'll kick it off, that's okay. So that's great, I see Brian, you came in. Brian, thanks very much for having the confidence in our community to continue to open up businesses and I think that are businesses that are much needed in the downtown core. And I'm so happy it's a pub that's about three doors from where I work, so. <laughs> and wait, I've been wondering what I'm gonna do, waiting for something to do Friday nights once I was leaving. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, I think it's great. Uh, as everybody knows, I was a proponent of very much endorse the CIP program when we first created it. I think I worked with Councillor-elect uh, Nikki Dwyer on uh, crafting how we would um, use the CIP. Um, but I did have a couple of questions, Carl, for you, and, sure. and just to clarify, uh, because I, uh, um, I'm okay with almost everything, except there was a couple items, and I mean, if the committees can uh, review it and prove it, I'm not going to question it, but I'm, it's only for my own, probably more for my <coughs> own understanding, um, because I know when we created the CIP, it wasn't for any equipment, what we would consider chattels, right, a movable equipment, um, but some of the items on here seem to be 
chattels. So could you can you comment on that? And I mean specifically the bar fridge, the broiler, cold table. Mm -hmm. Would those not be considered chattels? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very fair point. Certainly that was discussed at the, at the committee and there are other things such as that are I guess more movable such as, as tables, furnitures and other uh, startup items that were were not funded but certainly that is I can certainly note that that was discussed at the committee table. How do we feel? Which sort of items, such as along these along these grounds, are appropriate to fund? And that the uh, the decision was taken based on that discussion. But I, it, it certainly was uh, was discussed at at the table. Can I continue, Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Carl. So, in the CIP, because I don't have a copy with me, and clearly you must have consulted it. So, in the CIP, does it? comment about, talk about the uh, chattels and stuff like that in, in its definitions about what we'll fund? Well, the CIP is fairly broad in terms of, uh, in terms of itemizing specific things that, uh, that can be included and can't be included, but the, the overall objective of the CIP, of course, is to fund projects that add value to the property and add value to, uh, to the downtown and the assessments. So certainly, uh, like washroom improvements, except accessibility improvements, those clearly add value to the property. There's other items such as this, which may or may not stay with the property if it were to be sold and transferred. That's a little bit more, certainly more discretion, dis, discretionary at the, uh, the council table. And, and uh, under program two, if we were to be funding anything under program two, it is, it is considered to be a loan for the first five years. So if the proponent were to Okay. sell the property or, or move on, then he would have to repay a portion of that uh, money back under Program 2 if you were to fund that. Thanks for clarifying that for me because I'd forgotten that very important point. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not going to stand in the way. I'm going to support uh, with the committee's um, recommendations. I just, uh, when I was reading this and, and contemplating it over the weekend, I was thinking uh, maybe uh, it's a good time maybe with the new council to, yes. to dust off the CIP even though it's new and try and uh, maybe d make some, define some improvements uh, with more detail, uh, just for future, uh, so we're not, so everybody understands it. Because um, I, I, I know uh, when we've done them in the past, people have said to me, oh, if I knew you funded that, I would, I would have applied and done an improvement and done that. So uh, maybe a, uh, if we have an opportunity to do, define that better, <coughs> Uh, then f other people can take advantage of it. But certainly, uh, I'm going to support this uh, particular one. Councillor Allen. Uh, I just, uh, just to add on to what Councillor Cummings has to say, I sit on the committee, and um, we did have that discussion, um, as Carl has said, but I also think, I agree with him, that we're getting to a point now where this is a viable, um, uh, useful tool that people know about. I mean, in the in the beginning, when it was a hard sell, in that people didn't really fully understand how to how to come to us or what it was about. So I do think that the committee talked about perhaps as we move forward, we need to define it a little bit better. And just as you say, so I think that's what, but that's a good news story in the sense that we now know that people are understanding it and wanting to access it. So this is all good news for our downtown. So it's it's good that that's happening. Mayor Bengal. No, I, I agree with my colleagues. I think it's, well, I would share some of the reservations with, with the chattels that Councillor Cummings mentioned. I think it's um, overall a good use of CIP funding. Uh, the, the dollars are there, and it helps leverage bigger investment into uh, a pretty prominent building in the downtown and obviously a, a great new uh, restaurant and food choice. So um, I'll support the recommendation. Okay, so it's so nodding. Got nodding heads. Okay, yeah, I support it too. So, I guess we have a. We'll bring that before uh, council tonight, and uh, we'll. It's uh, we'll vote on it and it'll, it'll get it done tonight. So you can start your business quicker than you thought, <laughs> and good luck. Okay. Okay, where are we now? Community center canteen operations. Mr. Manheyer. <laughs> yes, Carl, you can sit down for a minute. Um, so the recommendation here is to award operation of the canteen at the Memorial Center uh, facility to the Smith Falls Bears. 
Um, what we did is just to give a bit of background, uh, in the service review, uh, we identified the canteen as, a, as an operation that, that uh, where we needed to get more metrics on it. Uh, so over the last couple of years, we've been uh, changing up menus and hours and, and, and playing with it a little bit. Uh, before uh, the service review was completed, it was it operated at a net loss. Uh, we were able to to kind of uh, leverage that a little bit and created a surplus, a positive surplus uh, at uh, at different times. And some of it is traffic flow dependent. But um, in 2015, we generated a, a net profit of twelve thousand dollars. In 16, it was four thousand. And in 17, it was 6,000. Um, so we've we've kind of got a rough idea. It's it's a fairly labor-intensive process. So we're looking at it, saying how can we uh, reduce that uh, that intensity of, of work on the part of staff uh, and have them focus on other things like selling space and and generating better lines of revenue. So we put out a, an expression of interest to the community to see if there was anybody interested in operating the canteen. Uh, through that expression of interest, we had three, um, three different groups uh, um, provide us with, uh, with their idea of how they would like to run the canteen. Uh, we did have stipulations in there about hours and, and some of the services so that we maintain the services for the community and for the users of the facility uh, for special events. And uh, so they've all agreed to those proce that uh, process and those hours. Um, the bears were the, the highest bid in terms of a monthly fee uh, to pay the town for that service. So essentially we would uh, see uh, approximately $11,500 annually. Um, the timing of this, um, the COI is, is a little bit unfortunate in that we we should have done this or could have done this earlier in the summer uh, as uh, um, just so that we can get people lined up for this season. And our season, just as a reminder to council, generally goes from August to, uh, to March, April uh, with ice and then it's less intense through the summer except for special events. Uh, so right now what we're proposing is to award this to the Smith Falls Bears um, to, to the uh, period going to July 2019. Um, and in that time, uh, they're prepared to, to get going as, as quickly as they can get approval on this. Um, and then what we would do is in July, we would review and determine kind of the course of action for the next uh, three years after that. Um, we haven't worked out a deal uh, with them in terms of who is going to, uh, for instance, purchasing our inventory and those kinds of things. But what we're looking for from council today is uh, the authority to go and, and uh, arrange for um, an agreement, an operating agreement with the Bears. Go ahead, Councilor Cummings. Uh, yeah, so just to clarify a couple of points. So um, I, um, so they'll pay nine fifty eight thirty three a month for 12 months. That's correct. Doing the math, I mean, 11.5, I guess. You must work in the bank. I could have figured that out. I must work <laughs> in the bank. I must have grade three. Uh, so, um, so that's good. So I know we've been around, gone in circles on, on this in the rink. Uh, um, we've looked at a number of different things since we've opened it and clearly, but even before that, in the old rink, uh, we were back and forth on how we would handle that. It's an important piece, as you very well know, to have. Uh, but just to clarify uh, as well, so it's just, is it just for the uh, Memorial Center or is it for the Youth Center as well? Right now the Youth Center canteen is not operating. We have, actually have it operating for the Youth Center, that, that, uh, the WAC program, um, and they're using that as a training facility for, uh, for their participants. Okay. So just the um, Memorial Center? Yeah, and we, we've, what we found actually was that the, the, uh, the uh, Youth Center didn't have the the amount of traffic that we needed in order to generate enough interest. And basically, we were doubling our operating costs and splitting the revenue. Right. So. Yeah. And then, uh, but nothing upstairs either, right? So they don't have the... 
No, but what this is is that they have the option of, of being able to provide food services for uh, things like tournaments or room bookings or, or, or those kinds of processes. And what we're doing is we're leaving it up to them to do. And uh, the people that they have running um, that are going to run their operation do this in uh, arenas in Ottawa currently. So they have an operating model that they can bring in and, and uh, the idea is to try to expand the business as much as they can to, to increase profitability. So if I, can I continue, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair? So uh, it threw me off there for a second. So is it the Bears or is it a third party? It's the Bears. They, they've hired these people that, that do this in, in other areas. So the Bears uh, um, ownership has changed this year. Um, uh, so the new owners are developing their marketing strategies and, and their operating model. And so this is our part of... our contract is with the Bears. Our contract is with the Bears. And they can... They can hire their people yeah, as no, they not, So I'm, I'm, all, I'm really good. I'm fine with this. I think it's actually the best uh, solution for that. Like I said, we've been back and forth on it. Uh, we had different models we were trying and talked about endlessly a number of years ago. So I'm glad this is, you put it simple and, and uh, you've gone ahead and done this. So I'm going to uh, support it uh, wholeheartedly, and I really like the fact that you've put in a probationary period so we can sum it up again in July and make sure that uh, it worked out as we expected. So I'm good. Thank you. Go ahead, Mayor Bangle. Uh, or does it uh, include all the equipment and the grill, the fryers, everything else of that? The equipment that we have in the canteen right now, they can use, and they will bring other equipment in based on their product selection. So, and who's responsible for the ongoing maintenance of the equipment? They're going to be responsible they will for be. that. Okay, yeah. so if someone fails, they will fix it. That'll be one of the components in the agreement. That okay, thank you. I'll, I'll also support it. Okay. How's it going? So I certainly don't want to beat this, but uh, just that uh, that mini. Mayor Panko was saying that made me ask the question. So the 958-33 uh, is certainly, so uh, obviously we've got to heat the building, so that's not an issue, but there's electricity being used. Is that metered separately, or is that just sort of in the? It, it's not metered separately. It would be kind of difficult to do, so that would be provided as part of the lease space. Yeah, and that's fine. I just um, wanted to clarify. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else? No? The uh, inventory. Eric, you had mentioned that. So what, what, what's the process on it? I was just curious. Well, we have, uh, we, we actually brought in a, 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 can't remember what they call it, a box system, but it's uh, something that we use for tracking sales. And we also put our inventory into it, so we'll have a sense of how many chocolate bars and all the rest of it we have. Uh, we'll look at selling that to them as a, as a part of, the, the process here. So if we have a thousand dollars in inventory, then they'll pay us a thousand dollars, and we'll just transfer it over. Okay, good. Thanks. That answers my question. Well, I guess we have a bunch of nodding heads here, so we're Thank bringing you, it Chair. forward tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Carl, I think you're up again. And uh, council has uh, directed staff to initiate a public tender process and solicit offers from any party who may have an interest in this land. So the first step in that process before we do that is to uh, is for a resolution to be passed declaring these lands surplus to the needs of the municipality. So the the recommendation of staff is just to further that uh, further that process and look to declare the land surplus. Go ahead, council. Yeah, so you're trying to sell someone else's house? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good, but I'm not sure how you get away with it, Carl, but uh, good, good try. Uh, so, um, no, I've got no problem with this. Um, the, it, I, I believe that this land is surplus to our needs, and there's been some discussions, uh, as there should have been in camera. Um, so if, uh, I'm all in favor of declaring, declaring this uh, surplus lands. But on that note, 
uh, I think I mentioned, uh, or maybe I, if I didn't, I'll ask now. Maybe that's a, a really good discussion for the future council. Maybe we can get an inventory of some of the other lots mm -hmm. that are in the community. Yep. Uh, we're, Smith Falls is a hot commodity right now. Uh, I've got developers phoning me in, a, in my bank capacity on a daily basis looking for land. Um, so uh, if we have a thorough understanding of, I know we, most people understand the commercial land we have, but you know this property, I didn't even, I didn't even know when I sat on council for 12 years that we had this uh, mm -hmm. small, this residential lot. So I think for a future council, it would be a really good discussion to bring forward an inventory of any other lots that are uh, buildable. Um, and um, But certainly you have no problem declaring this surplus. And the direction that we've provided uh, that you've outlined in here is the proper direction. Thank you. Everybody in favor? Yeah, we have nodding heads, so we'll bring that forward tonight as well. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Okay, do we have any standing items? Don't don't see any. Right, okay. Uh, uh, we'll adjourn this meeting. Uh, Move by me. <laughs> Move by Councillor Cummings. Second by Councillor Allen. All in favor. Good.
I wanted to put a paper bag. It's just. Hold on, I'm getting a scoop, don't I? Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of Smith Falls Town Council for Monday, November 5th. I've got a couple announcements uh, this evening. Uh, the first, uh, regarding Remembrance Day, Town of Smith Falls two minute wave of silence proclamation. Whereas November 11th, my eyes are tired tonight. <laughs> whereas November 11th is at the dawn of the century, we hope will be blessed with peace. Whereas all Canadians owe a debt to the 116,000 brave young men and women who gave their lives to defend our freedom and way of life. Whereas to help secure peace for future generations, we must always remember the sacrifices, especially the young people who were always the first called in times of strife. Whereas the Royal Canadian Legion is asking all Canadians to observe a two minute silence at 11 a.m. on November 11th. And this silence will begin in Newfoundland and sweep across the country like a wave as a clock strikes 11 a.m. in each time zone. Therefore, be resolved that the Council of the Town of Smith Falls hereby proclaims our support for the two-minute wave of silence and further pledge that we will participate in a two-minute silence at 11 a.m. local time on November 11th, 2018 and encourage the citizens of Smith Falls to participate in the two-minute wave of silence. I also let the community know that on behalf of the Squadron Sponsoring Committee for the 585 Air Cadet Squadron, I wish to advise that the cadets will be conducting their fall fundraising Tag Day in Smith Falls from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, November 17, 2018. Now, the Squadron is a vibrant organization that provides our youth ages 12 to 18 years the opportunity to learn, to serve, and to advance in the growing process of leadership and good citizenship. In the past several years, cadets have attended Air Cadet League camps and received training courses such as power flying, gliding, athletics, leadership, air crew, air crew survival, effective speaking, and instructors. So please represent and support, uh, please, uh, sorry, regard, regard uh, the 585, 443 wing 585 squadrons tag day and please support our local air cadets. Also, uh, notification uh, with Remembrance Day being on Sunday, November 11th, uh, town hall facilities will be closed on Monday, November 12th in recognition of Remembrance Day. Council meetings will be held on November 13th, uh, 5 o'clock, May the Whole, followed by a special council meeting. And just to advise, the fourth rotating street toll, as per bylaw 9980-2018, requests to host the rotating street toll are to be submitted to the deputy clerk by 4.30 p.m. on November 30th for consideration of the following year. Consideration will be provided for not-for-profit community associations and organizations for services, projects, or events that contribute towards the quality of life of Smith Falls residents. Uh, if your organization wishes to submit a request, please complete the application form, which can be found on the town's website. Um, or via email, please contact our Deputy Clerk Nadine Bennett and Bennett at smithfalls.ca. And also for the notification, the town's municipal grants program. The town of Smith Falls recognizes the valuable contributions made by community organizations and volunteer groups to improve the well-being of the community and the quality of life for its residents. In recognition of these contributions, the municipality is committed to providing modest financial assistance to such organizations through its municipal grants program. Support is provided each year for the municipality's operating budget from the municipality's operating budget to a qualifying organization through an annual application process. The application form and policy are available on the town's website, www.smithsfalls.ca, or by calling Town Hall 283 4124, extension 1130, or again by emailing our deputy clerk, uh, Ann Bennett, at smithsfalls.ca. 
sealed requests were received in envelopes clearly marked as to the 2019 Municipal Grants Program by the Deputy Clerk, Deputy Clerk at her office in Town Hall, 77 Beckwith Street North, Smith Falls, until 4.30 p.m. on November 30th. And final notification, uh, notice Town of Smith Falls appointments to committees and boards. Take notice that completed applications uh, will be received until noon on Friday, November 23rd for the various committees and boards uh, governed by the, by the municipality. Uh, they will include, uh, so there are four-year terms starting in January 2019 for the Child Development Centre Advisory Board, the Airport Commission, the Planning Advisory Committee, including duties of the Committee of Adjustment, the Heritage House Museum Advisory Board, the Municipal Heritage Committee, Property Standards Committee, Public Library Board, Recreational Hall of Fame, Smith Falls Drug Strategy Committee, Traffic Advisory Committee, Police Services Board, Economic Development Advisory Committee, Community Improvement Plan Evaluation Committee. Application must be completed and returned to the clerk's office uh, by the above noted date. Both the policy and application form are available on the, on the clerk's office or the town's website. Uh, terms of reference are available upon request. Members of the public who are currently serving on boards and committees and are interested in continuing to serve the town are requested to follow the same submission process by contacting our Deputy Clerk Nadine Bennett. Again, the deadline Friday, November 23rd at noon. Okay, that's it for the announcements. Ask for disclosure of monetary interest. None, we have no delegations. Our adoption for minutes is with Councillor Allen, please. Yes, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cummings that the minutes of the September 17th, 2018, mm -hmm. October 1st, 2018, October 9th, 2018, and October 15th, 2018 council meetings be approved as circulated. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Allen, seconded by Councillor Cummings. Minutes that the minutes of the September 17th, 2018, October 1st, 2018, October 9, 2018, and October 15, 2018, council meetings be approved as circulated. All in favor? Carried. Reports. Council Gallup, any reports this evening? No, I don't have any. Nothing tonight. No, thanks. Thank you, Council Cummings. No, I think we can dispense with that for tonight. Councilor Allen. I just, uh, I, I just want to um, publicly um, congratulate Peter Aw. Peter received the Joyce Brennan Award the other night on Saturday night. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't think of a better person to have received it. Peter has been uh, such an amazing community citizen over the many, many years I've known him. And um, this award was given to him for a number of things he does in our community that promotes arts and culture. So um, the mayor was there as well, and it was a nice evening, and uh, I congratulate him. Um, that's it. Thank you. I'll just a couple myself. Um, we're going back a little ways. But October 17th, the legalization events at Tweed, uh, legalization of recreational cannabis, and uh, certainly the interna international spotlight on the town that day uh, and that week. Um, on October 24th, uh, with council support, I attended the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario Annual Conference in Windsor and spoke on a panel uh, with uh, Laboat. And just to just to let the council and community know, this uh, Labote story has really caught the interest of people across the province and, and tourism operators and officials. So uh, it was great to have the opportunity to share that success story with uh, everyone in attendance at that conference. And I guess uh, you, you mentioned uh, Peter Rao's uh, w winning the Joyce Brennan Award on the weekend. Um, other than that, a few other small things, but nothing significant. Uh, we'll move on to bylaws. Our first one is with Councillor Gallipo, please. Yes, <coughs> bylaw 9986 2018, first and second reading. Is that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls at its meetings on the 1st, 9th, and 15th days of October 2018? Be received, read a first time, and taken as read a second time. We get exercise tonight, I guess. Uh, moved by Councillor Gallopo, second by Councillor Allen, bylaw 9986 at 2018. Bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls at its meetings held on the 1st, 9th, and 15th days of October 2018. We received read a first time and taken as read a second time. All in favor? Carry discussion, Councillor Gallopo. That's just a standard item that we need to do uh, to, for, to approve the minutes of these meetings. 
Third reading, please. Third reading. A bylaw 9986 2018. Third reading. Then a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of Smith Falls, to cor the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls at its meetings on the 1st, the 9th, and 15th days of October 2018. Be read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 9986-2018. Thank you. It's moved by Councillor Gallipo, second by Councillor Allen, bylaw 9986-2018, the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls at its meetings on the 1st, 9th, and 15th days of October 2018. But we've now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 9986-2018. All in favor? Our next bylaw is with Councillor Cummings, please. Moved by sec <coughs> excuse me. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Allen, that a bylaw to adopt a policy to prohibit the feeding of wildlife within the town of Smith Falls be received and read a first time and taken as read a second time. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Cummings, seconded by Councillor Allen, bylaw 9987-2018, that bylaw to adopt a policy to prohibit the feeding of wildlife within the town of Smith Falls be received and read a first time and taken as read a second time. All in favour? Carry. Discussion, Councillor Cummings? Uh, yeah, this come about, uh, came about because of um, a taxpayer in the town um, came forward and, and made some uh, complaints about um, someone feeding wildlife and uh, inter uh, interfering with the quiet enjoyment of their own home. Um, so um, we examined the issue, had a report uh, from staff, and um, decided it was worthy of passing a bylaw um, because it was dangerous, uh, could be considered dangerous, but also interfering with, um, as I said, the neighbors' um, enjoyment of their own home and their own yard. And that's it. Um, I just wanted to add to appropriate feeding, right? Because it, the, the, some of the food that was being given was attracting other animals rather than the animal it was intended for. And I think in our bylaw, didn't we mention that it's bird f seed and, and food that's appropriate for what it is that we're feeding? So bird feeders are still okay. permitted. I've, I've, I've been getting a lot of questions about that or concerns about that, and I... That's how I've explained it. Yes, to, and to clarify exactly, um, we're not trying to discourage people from feeding songbirds in their backyard. It's about uh, nuisance birds, right? Third reading, please. Move myself, seconded by Councillor Allen, that a bylaw to adopt a policy to prohibit the feeding of wildlife within the town of Smith Falls be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 9987 2018. Thank you. Move by Councillor Cummings, second by Councillor Allen, bylaw 9987-2018, and a bylaw to adopt a policy to prohibit the feeding of wildlife within the town of Smith Falls. We now have a third time and finally passed signed sealed in, number 9987-2018. All in favour? Carried. Our next bylaw is with Councillor Allen, please. Yes, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cummings, bylaw 9988-2018 that a bylaw to authorize execution of a community improvement plan funding agreement with Brian Paquette respecting the property known as 2 Russell Street be received and read a first time and taken as read a second time. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Allen, seconded by Councillor Cummings, bylaw 9988-2018, the bylaw to authorize execution of a community improvement plan funding agreement with Brian Paquette respecting the property known as 2 Russell Street be received read a first time and taken as read a second time. All in favor? Carry discussion, Councillor Allen? Yes, this is the bylaw. We will have a motion um, coming next, but the bylaw gives um, recognition to this being an acceptable uh, business that's come forward to, to access the community improvement plan. And the business is the building, the beautiful building that used to be Coffee Culture. And um, Brian is going to be transforming it into a gastropub. So we look forward to that whole process. Thank you, third reading, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Chris Cummings, Councillor Cummings, bylaw 9988-2018, that a bylaw to authorize execution of a community improvement plan funding agreement with Brian Paquette respecting the property known as 2 Russell Street be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 9988-2018. 
Thank you. Moved by Councillor Allen, second by Councillor Collins, bylaw 9988 2018. The bylaw to authorize execution of a community improvement plan funding agreement with Brian Paquette, respecting a property known as 2 Russell Street, being now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 9988 2018. All in favor? Carried. And back to Councillor Gallopo for the next bylaw. By, uh, uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Cummings. Bylaw 9989 2018. First and second reading, uh, that a bylaw to authorize the exemption of the procurement bylaw number 7850-2004 to allow Director of Community Services to issue a request for proposal res respecting equipment for Lower Reach Park be received, read a first time, and taken as read a second time. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Gallopo, second by Councillor Cummings, bylaw 8 9989-2018. Bylaw to authorize an exemption to procurement bylaw. I can read that. 7850 2004 to allow the Director of Community Services to issue a request for proposal respecting equipment for the Lower Reach Park be received in a first time and taken as read a second time. All in favor? Carry discussion, Councillor Galpole. Yeah, the equipment that uh, required apparently, uh, there's different manufacturers for this equipment, so uh, Mr. Manhires asked for. Uh, a request was going to put a request for proposal out and then uh, for the equipment and bring it back to council once he gets all his numbers together. Thank you. Third reading, please. Bylaw, uh, bylaw 9989 2018, third reading. That a bylaw to authorize the exemption of the proc procurement bylaw 7850 to, uh, to allow the director of Community Services to issue a request for proposal respecting equipment for Lower Reach Park be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 8989-2018. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Gallopel, second by Councillor Cummings, bylaw 9989-2018, the bylaw to authorize an exemption to the procurement bylaw 7850-2004 to allow the Director of Communi Community Services to issue a request for proposal respecting equipment for Lower Reach Park. We now have a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed in, number 9989-2018. All in favor? And carried. That's it for our bylaws. Our first motion is with Councillor Cummings, please. Move myself, second by Councillor Allen, that Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls award the operation of the canteen at the Memorial Community Center Recreation Facility to the Smiths Falls Bears, and further that the Council authorize the Mayor and Clerk to execute the final operating agreement with the Smiths Falls Bears. Discussion, Councilor Cummings? Um, we had a report uh, at the meeting previous to this. Uh, there was a tender uh, process that, um, uh, that staff uh, put out, um, and the Bears were the uh, $958.33 per month. <laughs> uh, and I've done, by doing the math, that's 11.5 roughly. Um, anyway, so we had uh, conversations about how best to handle this. Uh, previously, staff um, coordinated this. Uh, previous to that, we had a um, third party doing it. Previous to that, staff. So it's been all over the map, but um, I think staff's made a really good. Um, argument that the best thing to do was to put out a tender and we're this bylaws our resolution is just uh, awarding that tender uh, to the Smith Falls Bears. Thank you. Move by Councillor Cummings, second by Councillor Allen, Community Center Canteen Operations. The Council of the Corporation of Town of Smith Falls award the operation of the canteen at the Memorial Community Center Recreational Facility to the Smith Falls Bears. And further the council authorize a mayor and clerk to execute the final operating agreement with the Smith Falls Bears. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Allen, you've got the next motion. Yes, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cummings. Community Improvement Grant, Axe and Arrow Gastropub on 2 Russell Street. That Council of the Corporation of the Town of Smith Falls authorize a facade improvement grant under Program 1 to a maximum of $2,320.47 and a building restoration, renovation, and improvement grant under Program 2 to a maximum amount of $13,405.56 to Brian Paquette, owner of the Axe and Arrow Gastro Pub for the property located at 2 Russell Street, and that a refund be provided to Brian Paquette representing 75%
of the building permit application, which is under Program 3, and further that the funds be released according to the funding agreement. Thank you. And discussion, please, Councilor Allen. Yes, this is what I was explaining, the bylaw that we just passed. This is how the money has been um, uh, given to provided to uh, Brian in his business, and it's a matching grant. So um, the money that I've um, talked about will be matched by Brian as well. And what, what it's designed to do is to promote businesses to make changes to the buildings that they're renting or owning that's going to really impact the downtown. Thank you. Move by Councillor Allen, second by Councillor Cummings, Community Improvement Grant, Axe and Arrow, Gastropub at 2 Russell Street East. Uh, the Council of Corporation of Tennis Coast Falls authorized a facade improvement grant in Program 1 to a maximum of $2,320.47 and a building restoration, renovation, and improvement grant in brackets Program 2 to a maximum amount of $13,405.56 to Brian Paquette, owner of the Axe and Arrow Gastropub for the property located at 2 Russell Street, and that a refund be, pr be provided to Brian Paquette representing 75% of the building permit application in brackets Program 3 and further, that the funds be released according to the funding agreement. All in favor? Carried. Final motion with Councillor Gallifo, please. Uh, Moved by myself, second by Councillor Cummings. Surplus land that the council that the council of the corporation of Town of Smith Falls deemed the property adjacent to 16 Canadian Street East as surplus to the needs of the Town of Smith Falls. <coughs> Discussion, Councillor Galpo? Yeah, this piece of property apparently um, with, with staff looked at it as well as and and come up to, and to, we've all decided that it's, it's surplus and uh, to, so we need to just approve a motion to uh, declare it surplus and then uh, probably it'll go out for a tender of some kind. All right. Purchase. Thank you. Move by Councillor Gallup, second by Councillor Cummings, surplus land, 18 Cornelius Street East, the adjacent property. The Council of the Corporation of Tennis Smith Falls deemed the property adjacent to 18 Cornelius Street East as surplus to the needs of the Tennis Smith Falls, sorry, 16 Cornelius Street East. All in favor? Carried. Any inquiries or announcements? Councillor Cummings. Um, just um, no inquiries. So did you? I'm not sure if you covered it, but uh, so next Monday um, is, um, is town hall will be closed because of uh, Remembrance Day, yeah. and then uh, so that we'll have a committee the whole meeting Tuesday, November 13th. And um, did you happen to mention that uh, that will be our probably the last meeting of this council? I did not mention that. No. Okay. So thought I would. You've, you've not mentioned it. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Motion for adjournment is with Councillor Gallipo, please. 550. Move by myself, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Cummings, that, the, that this that this council adjourn its proceedings at 5.50 p.m. and stand so adjourned until the next duly called meeting of the council. Move by Councillor Gallopo, second by Councillor Cummings. Adjourn at this council adjourns proceedings at 5.50 p.m. and stands to adjourn for the next duly called meeting of council. All in favour? We're adjourned. What the, when does the new council get sworn in? Uh, it will be December.